In mathematics, the exterior product or wedge product of vectors is an algebraic construction used in geometry to study areas, volumes, and their higher dimensional analogues. The exterior product of two vectors u and v, denoted by uv, is called a bivector and lives in a space called the exterior square, a vector space that is distinct from the original space of vectors. The magnitude of uv can be interpreted as the area of the parallelogram with sides u and v, which in three dimensions can also be computed using the cross product of the two vectors. Like the cross product, the exterior product is anti-commutative, meaning that uv equals minus for all vectors u and v. One way to visualize a bivector is as a family of parallelograms all lying in the same plane, having the same area, and with the same orientation of their boundaries, a choice of clockwise or counterclockwise. When regarded in this manner, the exterior product of two vectors is called a two-blade. More generally, the exterior product of any number k of vectors can be defined in is sometimes called a k-blade. It lives in a space known as the kth exterior power. The magnitude of the resulting k-blade is the volume of the k-dimensional parallelotope whose edges are the given vectors, just as the magnitude of the scalar triple product of vectors in three dimensions gives the volume of the parallelopiped generated by those vectors. The exterior algebra, or Grassmann algebra after Hermann Grassmann, is the algebraic system whose product is the exterior product. The exterior algebra provides an algebraic setting in which to answer geometric questions. For instance, blades have a concrete geometric interpretation, and objects in the exterior algebra can be manipulated according to a set of unambiguous rules. The exterior algebra contains objects that are not just k-blades, but sums of k-blades, such a sum is called a k-vector. The k-blades, because they are simple products of vectors, are called the simple elements of the algebra. The rank of any k-vector is defined to be the smallest number of simple elements of which it is a sum. The exterior product extends to the full exterior algebra, so that it makes sense to multiply any two elements of the algebra. Equipped with this product, the exterior algebra is an associative algebra, which means that alpha equals gamma for any elements alpha, beta, gamma. The k vectors have degree k, meaning that they are sums of products of k vectors. When elements of different degrees are multiplied, the degrees add like multiplication of polynomials. This means that the exterior algebra is a graded algebra. The definition of the exterior algebra makes sense for spaces not just of geometric vectors, but of other vector-like objects such as vector fields or functions. In full generality, the exterior algebra can be defined for modules over a commutative ring, and for other structures of interest in abstract algebra. It is one of these more general constructions where the exterior algebra finds one of its most important applications, where it appears as the algebra of differential forms that is fundamental in areas that use differential geometry. Differential forms are mathematical objects that represent infinitesimal areas of infinitesimal parallelograms, and so can be integrated over surfaces and higher dimensional manifolds in a way that generalizes the line integrals from calculus. The exterior algebra also has many algebraic properties that make it a convenient tool in algebra itself. The association of the exterior algebra to a vector space is a type of functor on vector spaces, which means that it is compatible in a certain way with linear transformations of vector spaces. The exterior algebra is one example of a bialgebra, meaning that its dual space also possesses a product, and this dual product is compatible with the exterior product. This dual algebra is precisely the algebra of alternating multilinear forms, and the pairing between the exterior algebra and its dual is given by the interior product. Motivating examples Areas in the plane The Cartesian plane R2 is a vector space equipped with a basis consisting of a pair of unit vectors suppose that are a pair of given vectors in R2, written in components. There is a unique parallelogram having V and W as two of its sides. 
The area of this parallelogram is given by the standard determinant formula. Consider now the exterior product of V and W, where the first step uses the distributive law for the exterior product, and the last uses the fact that the exterior product is alternating, and in particular E2 E1 equals minus E1 E2. Note that the coefficient in this last expression is precisely the determinant of the matrix VW. The fact that this may be positive or negative has the intuitive meaning that V and W may be oriented in a counterclockwise or clockwise sense as the vertices of the parallelogram they define. Such an area is called the signed area of the parallelogram. The absolute value of the signed area is the ordinary area, and the sign determines its orientation. The fact that this coefficient is the signed area is not an accident. In fact, it is relatively easy to see that the exterior product should be related to the signed area if one tries to axiomatize this area as an algebraic construct r equals jka for any real numbers j and k since rescaling either of the sides rescales the area by the same amount r equals zero since the area of the degenerate parallelogram determined by v is zero r equals minus a since interchanging the roles of v e and w reverses the orientation of the parallelogram r equals a for real j since adding a multiple of W to V affects neither the base nor the height of the parallelogram and consequently preserves its area, R equals 1, since the area of the unit square is 1. With the exception of the last property, the exterior product satisfies the same formal properties as the area. In a certain sense, the exterior product generalizes the final property by allowing the area of a parallelogram to be compared to that of any standard chosen parallelogram. In other words, the exterior product in two dimensions provides a basis-independent formulation of area. Cross and triple products for vectors in R3, the exterior algebra is closely related to the cross product and triple product. Using the standard basis E1, E2, E3, the exterior product of a pair of vectors and is where E1, E2, E3, E1, E2, E3 is the basis for the three-dimensional space λ2. The coefficients above are the same as those in the usual definition of the cross product of vectors in three dimensions. The only difference being that the exterior product is not an ordinary vector, but instead is a two-vector. Bringing in a third vector the exterior product of three vectors is where E1, E2, E3 is the basis vector for the one-dimensional space λ3. The scalar coefficient is the triple product of the three vectors. The cross product and triple product in three dimensions each admit both geometric and algebraic interpretations. The cross product U times V can be interpreted as a vector which is perpendicular to both U and V and whose magnitude is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by the two vectors. It can also be interpreted as the vector consisting of the minors of the matrix with columns U and V. The triple product of U, V, and W is geometrically a volume. Algebraically, it is the determinant of the matrix with columns U, V, and W. The exterior product in three dimensions allows for similar interpretations. In fact, in the presence of a positively oriented orthonormal basis, the exterior product generalizes these notions to higher dimensions formal definitions and algebraic properties. The exterior algebra λ over a vector space V over a field K is defined as the quotient algebra of the tensor algebra by the two-sided ideal I, generated by all elements of the form XX such that XV, symbolically, the exterior product of two elements of lambda is defined by where the mod di means we do the tensor product in the usual way and then declare every element of the tensor that is in the ideal to be zero. As t0 equals k, t1 equals v, and the inclusions of k and v in t induce injections of k and v into lambda. These injections are commonly considered as inclusions, and called natural embeddings, natural injections or natural inclusions. 
Anti-commutativity of the exterior product The exterior product is alternating on elements of E, which means that x x equals 0 for all x v. It follows that the product is also anti-commutative on elements of E, for supposing that x y v, hence conversely. It follows from the anti-commutativity of the product that the product is alternating, unless k has characteristic 2. More generally, if x1, x2, xk are elements of E, and sigma is a permutation of the integers 1, k, then where sgn is the signature of the permutation sigma, the exterior power the kth exterior power of E, denoted lambda k, is the vector subspace of lambda spanned by L elements of the form if alpha lambda k then alpha is said to be a k vector if furthermore alpha can be expressed as an exterior product of k elements of e then alpha is said to be decomposable although decomposable k vectors span lambda k not every element of lambda k is decomposable for example, in R4, the following two vector is not decomposable. Basis and dimension If the dimension of V is N and E1, N, is a basis of V, then the set is a basis for lambda K. The reason is the following. Given any exterior product of the form every vector Vj can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors A, using the bilinearity of the exterior product. This can be expanded to a linear combination of exterior products of those basis vectors. Any exterior product in which the same basis vector appears more than once is zero. Any exterior product in which the basis vectors do not appear in the proper order can be reordered, changing the sign whenever two basis vectors change places. In general, the resulting coefficients of the basis k vectors can be computed as the minors of the matrix that describes the vectors vj in terms of the basis a. By counting the basis elements, the dimension of lambda k is equal to a binomial coefficient. In particular, lambda k equals 0 for k greater than n. Any element of the exterior algebra can be written as a sum of k vectors. Hence, as a vector space the exterior algebra is a direct sum equals k in lambda 1 equals v, and therefore its dimension is equal to the sum of the binomial coefficients, which is 2n. Rank of a k vector if alpha lambda k, then it is possible to express alpha as a linear combination of decomposable k vectors. Where each alpha is decomposable, say the rank of the k vector alpha is the minimal number of decomposable k vectors in such an expansion of alpha. This is similar to the notion of tensor rank. Rank is particularly important in the study of two vectors. The rank of a two vector alpha can be identified with half the rank of the matrix of coefficients of alpha in a basis. Thus if A is a basis for V, then alpha can be expressed uniquely as where Aij equals minus Aj. The rank of the matrix Aij is therefore even, and is twice the rank of the form alpha. In characteristic zero, the two-vector alpha has rank P if and only if and graded structure the exterior product of a k-vector with a p-vector as a vector, once again invoking bilinearity. As a consequence, the direct sum decomposition of the preceding section gives the exterior algebra the additional structure of a graded algebra. Symbolically, moreover, if k is the basis field, we have an the exterior product is graded anti-commutative, meaning that if alpha lambda k and beta lambda p, then in addition to studying the graded structure on the exterior algebra, all Barkey studies additional graded structures on exterior algebras, such as those on the exterior algebra of a graded module. Universal property let V be a vector space over the field K. Informally, multiplication in lambda is performed by manipulating symbols and imposing a distributive law, an associative law, and using the identity VV equals zero for VV. Formally, lambda is the most general algebra in which these rules hold for the multiplication, in the sense that in any unital associative K algebra containing V with alternating multiplication 
specification on V must contain a homomorphic image of lambda. In other words, the exterior algebra has the following universal property. Given any unital associative k-algebra A and any k-linear map J, V A such that J J equals zero for every V in V, then there exists precisely one unital algebra homomorphism F, lambda A such that J equals F, for all V in V, see above. To construct the most general algebra that contains V and whose multiplication is alternating on V, it is natural to start with the most general associative algebra that contains V, the tensor algebra T, and then enforce the alternating property by taking a suitable quotient. We thus take the two-sided ideal I and T generated by all elements of the form V V for V in V, and define lambda as the quotient. It is then straightforward to show that lambda contains V and satisfies the above universal property. As a consequence of this construction, the operation of assigning to a vector space V its exterior algebra lambda is a functor from the category of vector spaces to the category of algebras. Rather than defining lambda first and then identifying the exterior powers lambda k as certain subspaces, one may alternatively define the spaces lambda k first and then combine them to form the algebra lambda. This approach is often used in differential geometry and is described in the next section. Generalizations given a commutative ring R and an R module M, we can define the exterior algebra lambda just as above. As a suitable quotient of the tensor algebra T, it will satisfy the analogous universal property. Many of the properties of lambda also require that M be a projective module. Where finite dimensionality is used, the properties further require that M be finitely generated and projective. Generalizations to the most common situations can be found in exterior algebras of vector bundles are frequently considered in geometry and topology. There are no essential differences between the algebraic properties of the exterior algebra of finite dimensional vector bundles and those of the exterior algebra of finitely generated projective modules. By the S1 theorem, more general exterior algebras can be defined for sheaves of modules.